Let's look at the mechanisms of operation of the emitters of each generation. Here you have the first generation emitters acting on the basis of the fluorescence mechanism. In the emission layer, an electron meets a hole and they recombine, exciting the molecule of emitter. One of the four molecules excites to a singlet state from which it can return to a singlet ground state by emitting a quantum of light. The other three molecules, excited to the triplet state, are stuck at this level, unable to emit light, so they slowly lose their excitation energy. The second generation of emitters acts according to the phosphorescence mechanism. This generation can emit light from the triplet states, thanks to two effects called inter-system crossing and spin-orbit coupling. These effects are available only for emitters containing heavy metals but allows to utilize all excited molecules. And finally, the TADF mechanism, which also uses all excited molecules, but from the singlet state. The crucial factor for emitters acting on the basis of the TADF mechanism is the small energy difference between excited singlet and triplet states. Normally, the energy difference between these two excited states for organic molecules is about half of an electron volt. But for the TADF emitter, this difference must not be greater than one tenth of an electron volt. And again, the hole and the electron recombine, exciting the emitter molecules. The molecules, excited to singlet state, can easily lose their energy by light emission. This is prompt emission. The molecules, excited to triplet state, can, thanks to a low energy difference between states, go to the singlet state and also emit light. This component of emission is called delayed fluorescence.